So tonight we're going to do an experiment and we are going to check out the light pollution filter and we're going to show the difference it makes on some objects. And so what I've done is I have the C-Star S30 and I am setting it to 20 second exposures and make sure that you've clicked on save each frame and then we're going to go back to the main screen. We will click on galaxies and I think the one that I want to do is this C12 because it's really high in the sky. And you see that there's not a little red dot in the picture. Let me, um, probably doesn't show one in the galaxies because they don't frequently recommend the light pollution filter for galaxies. And so what we're going to do is we are going to, let me show you what where that light is. If you go to nebulas, you see there's a little red dot in the corner of each of the not every image but a lot of them where they re, um, suggest that you turn on that light pollution filter well i want to do galaxies and see if we can see a difference so i'm going to image this c12 and it should be up for a while i'll image it for a little while and um, the light pollution filter is turned off and then uh, what I will do is I'll image it for maybe an hour. If it, if it comes in really nice and clear, I'll do it for longer than an hour. Um, or I guess if it doesn't come in clear, I'll do it for longer. And then I will stop it and I will turn on the light pollution filter and then image it again. And we're going to see if we can see a difference. And then we'll... Um, explain a little bit about the light pollution filter and stuff when that happens but um, for now we're you know it's, I just set it to the 20 second exposures and it's going to take two minutes for it to do that image enhancing and changing the settings inside the sea star and then once it does it'll start imaging that galaxy and then um, we will image it at least an hour um, possibly longer if it doesn't come in nice um, it is a full moon tonight, so we may have some hindrances with that. But um, then I'll stop it, and then we will image it with the light pollution filter on. So hopefully we can see a difference in that light pollution filter. And so ho I'm hoping that it will show why we use that light pollution filter. Um, after that, um, I... I think after that I will image a nebula and one that recommends the light pollution filter be turned on and then we will image that as well um, with it off and then again with it on so that we can compare so we can see the difference that turning on that light pollution filter does. So that is my plan going forward and as soon as this is done we'll start the first imaging and then I'll bring you back when we're We've got more stuff to report. Maybe while we wait uh, for some of these imaging things to happen, we is, is it is a good time to explain this light pollution filter. Well, um, there's a reason that the Sea Star S30 and S50 are called smart telescopes. Well, part of the smart part is they figure all this stuff out for us. You know, if you had a, a normal telescope that you look through an eyepiece and lug it out and put in your own uh, lenses and filters, you would have to know all this stuff. Well, that's some of the advantage of having a sea star is you don't necessarily have to know. You know, as you get more into the hobby and you learn more about it, is it advantageous to know some of this? Possibly so. And so um, the light pollution filter is a what it does is there's a mechanics in the c star and when you turn it on it flips that filter over the lens and the sensor and so when light comes in what that the light pollution filter does is it blocks artificial light such as street lights um, car lights um, porch lights you know that sort of thing that that mainly that yellowish color street light kind of light it improves the quality of astrophotography by increasing the contrast and that brings out the details in faint objects like nebula 
It works by only letting through specific wavelengths of light, and it prim primarily it lets through the HA or the hydrogen alpha and the O3, the double ionized oxygen bands of light. And those are used a lot in the astrophotography. So what happens in a smart telescope is when we turn on that light pollution filter, it moves that filter in front of the lens and then it blocks certain light, just kind of like the sun filter blocks some of the solar rays that are coming through and allows us to view the sun. Well, it's the same thing with the light pollution filter, but it's just blocking different kinds of light. And so it's blocking um, some of the the lights that are produced by artificial lighting, like street lights and things. And so it is allowing the hydrogen alpha particles to come through and the oxygen particles to come through. And they burn a different color when they're coming through to a, a lens or to our eyes. And so it's basically like wearing sunglasses for our sea star and it's blocking certain kinds of light. You know, they've made those sunglasses now that will block the blue light. You can wear these uh, sunglass things that are kind of a blue tint and it'll block the blue light from the screens of your computer. Well, a light pollution filter is basically the same thing, but is blocking specific bands of light color. And so that's what happens with the light pollution filter. Well, why do we use it on galaxies? or not, or same for nebulas. Why do we frequently use it and um, turn it on? Uh, well, that's because of what the light that is coming from the object is. So the lights coming from galaxies are some of the white bright lights um, from the object itself. Whereas the nebula are gases that have exploded and they're emitting hydrogen and oxygen wavelength light. And so if we turn that on, it blocks other kind of light and allows those lights to come through more prominently. And that's kind of what makes the nebula stand out a little more when we turn that light pollution filter on. So we will get some examples of that tonight and we'll see if it will help explain the light pollution filter and we'll see if it really does make a difference. And I think it'll be a fun experiment to try. So I'll bring you back when we've got more news to report. Okay, we're getting close to the hour of captured exposure time. Um, and it's done pretty good. I think we started at 6.08 and it's now 7.14. So it saved a really high percentage of these exposures. So that's really a great thing. Um, that's not what this experiment is about, but it's been doing a great job tonight. Um, we're, we have a couple more exposures and then what we're going to do is we're going to stop the imaging and then we will turn on the light pollution filter and then we will resume imaging. And so that's our plan moving forward. And this is what the picture looks like. I will put up pictures after the fact um, to compare for a longer period of time. Okay, we've hit our hour of exposure time. So I'm gonna click to stop. And then I'm going to turn on that light pollution filter. And then I'm going to click to start that again and it's started over the counter and now we're going to save these um, exposures with the light pollution filter on and so we'll bring you back when we're closer to the end guess we'll make sure that it's imaging Okay, it saved the first exposure, and there it is. And so we'll bring you back when we've got a, an hour of exposures with the light pollution filter turned on. 
All right, we're a couple exposures away from saving this part of the experiment. This is the light pollution filter turned on, that same object that we did before. I will do screenshots and put the pictures side by side, but one thing I want to point out on this one, um, the moon is coming up, and so the we're not judging this one based on the quality of the image because the moon is going to come up and affect the lighting a little bit. But what I want you to notice is if I zoom in, you can really see that red color. And that red color is the hydrogen. And okay, we've hit the one hour mark, so I will stop that one. But um, it turned that object more red because it allowed more of that hydrogen to come through. So um, for the next part, I think what we'll do is we're going to go into some nebulas and let's find a nebula that is high up in the sky. Let's see this one. Let's see. It is to the west. We could try this one. We can try the Pelican Nebula. If you see in the photo there, it does recommend a light pollution filter. If you're clicking on this view, it's right underneath the name of the object. This is the Pelican Nebula. And they are recommending to turn that light pollution filter on. And so um, we will... Um, we will have it go to it. And because it's a smart telescope, it is automatically going to turn that filter on when it's recommended. Um, so what we'll do on this time is the first time we image it, we will do with the light pollution filter on because that's what it's going to do once it finds it. And it will turn it on automatically because that's part of what the smart telescope does. And then we will image it for an hour. And then we will do just like we did with the galaxy. You see there it found the object. And then it turned that light pollution filter on in the top right hand corner. You can tell that it's turned on. And now it started its imaging. Um, this, this, we didn't change any of the settings either. So this is saving 20 second exposures. So here are the results of the fireworks galaxy. Uh, this picture is no light pollution filter on and both of the images saved one hour of exposure time. And so this first picture is um, no light pollution filter turned on. And here we are with the picture on the right with the light pollution filter turned on. Um, you can definitely see a difference. You see how there's more red color? Well, that's because it's allowing more of the hydrogen to come through and blocking some of the other whiter and yellow light that's coming through. And that's what that filter does. And that's why it works really well with nebula because a lot of nebulas have a lot of hydrogen in them and it causes this red color when it um, comes through. And so um, on galaxies, a lot of times you want them to be white or yellow um, or golden colors. Um, they don't seem to have as much red in the galaxies. And so um, depending on the filter, you can focus in more on that red part, the hydrogen and the oxygen parts of those objects. And so this is a good example of the light pollution filter. Now the smart telescope recommends we do not turn on the light pollution filter because I, I guess it's because historically we like to see the galaxies in the whites and yellow colors. Uh, when you add the red to it, it does mute it a little so you don't see the spiral arms quite as much and it it doesn't show so much of that white color and the spiral part of the galaxy and so um, this was a good example now next up we'll show the results of the nebula so here's the first picture of the pelican nebula 
and this is the one with the light filter, light pollution filter turned on. This is um, one hour of exposure time, just like the others. And we will take uh, also an hour of the light pollution filter turned off. But in this one, you can see there's quite a bit of detail. It is only an hour of exposure and, and we know that Images get better with more and more exposure time, but this one really is pretty good. There was no editing of any of these pictures in the Sea Star app or outside, other than maybe some cropping to fit them into the screen. Uh, but this was straight off of the Sea Star with the light pollution filter turned on. This is the light pollution filter turned off. And this is a good example of why the light pollution filter is used on Nebula. You can see in the left image that there's a lot more detail in this one because a lot of nebulas have that hydrogen basis to them. And so when you use the light pollution filter, it allows that hydrogen light to come through the filter and hit the sensor. When you turn that light pollution filter off, it allows all the light around to enter the sensor and it kind of dilutes the hydrogen light. And so that's the exact purpose of the light pollution filter. And this was a great example of that. So, um, you know, when you're trying to figure out, do I use the light pollution filter or not? In the Sea Star, it does make recommendations but that doesn't mean that we have to always go with that recommendation. So if you're doing an image and it's not, the light pollution filter is turned off and you're not getting quite the colors you want or it's not bright, you know, you can always try turning on the light pollution filter and see if that will help bring out and dry out some of the detail. So this experiment was very good at showing the difference you know, it was the same object, same amount of time, one right after the other. It was a, there was a full moon, but there was a full moon for both of these images. And so it's a good example of what that light pollution filter can do. And that's exactly why it's in the Sea Star. Um, they, they do turn it on automatically on some objects when you do the go to. Um, but you can manually turn it on or manually turn it off. Um, but I thought this turned out to be a great example in both examples of why you would sometimes use it and sometimes not. I hope this has been educational. Um, sometimes it's easier to understand these things if you see the difference and visually see um, the concept behind it. And I thought this turned out great as an example. Um, the image on the left here looks brilliant and bright and a lot of detail. The one on the right needs some work, doesn't it? And so um, we can enhance our images by utilizing that light pollution filter when it's um, needed. And so I hope you learned something new. Hopefully, um, we're going to be doing a lot more experiments um, on the C-Star S30 and the S50. So if you like these kind of um, experiments and the content that we have here, please feel free to join us. If you haven't yet bought a C-Star and you're looking into it, we have an affiliate link in the description box. And... Um, we'd appreciate everybody that supports the channel by using that link. Um, if you're going to buy a C-Star, be sure to, even if you don't use our link, be sure to use a, a go to a legitimate store. Um, I would maybe avoid the ones on Amazon because those there have been some problems in the past. But anyway, um, we hope you have enjoyed this experiment and we look forward to producing more. Uh, we're wishing clear skies to everybody, and thanks for joining us.